All right, guys. No. Little technical difficulty. I forgot to turn on the mic. Hopefully the camera mic was on. If not, y'all just missed a whole lot of stuff. Literally. <laughs> but Alan, I thank you so much for coming to the car talk, man. I know. I, I love when people, when I invite people and just right away they're like, oh yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. Not, let's I'm make it happen. No, you guys, literally this happened hace unos días when we we're filming yeah. for my podcast. Ya cuando se iba, me preguntó, yo bien encantado y pues aquí andamos. And you know why? It was because we were as we were talking, I felt like asking you questions, but I was like. I don't think that that'll be the best sense. Like, imagine me all taking over I your know, podcast. Like, I'm the new host of Let's <laughs> Talk Noche de Pendejadas. Imagínense. Yeah, so I was like, man, like, because I, I really did feel like asking you, especially about your childhood. I don't know why. Yeah. But I was like, no, you know what? Maybe I'll, I'll just ask him if he's down for a car talk. And here we are. So I'm, I'm excited. Alan and I, is, uh, you know, the goal of this car talk, so if, you, if you're not familiar with it, is to just really dive deep into your personal life and just, like, take a moment to hear you out about your life in general, your childhood, your high school experience, your come your come up as an yeah. influencer, and just a little bit of everything, you know, so that people can really, really, really get to get know to you. Know and you. I feel like our, our supporters just like to relate to us, you know, because I feel like whenever they see us having fun and doing all these crazy things, it's fun to watch, but it, it might not be as relatable. Realistic because, too. Yeah, yeah, because people, I mean, we all go through stuff and that's the kind of stuff that we don't tend to share online. So I feel like us sitting here and talking about the real deep stuff gets them to like realize like, oh man, like these like influencers real that people. I like are real people. I also like that too because like you said, it's very relatable because nos miran de fiesta en fiesta. Well, I mean, yeah. like you guys always see me partying. I feel like people think like, ay, este nomás se la pasa en fiesta. But like, <laughs> there's a lot of things that I go through, you guys, even to this day that like, I'm sure a lot of you guys are like, wait, soy igual que él. So uh -huh. like, I like these type of videos. That's no, why I'm excited yeah. to just sit here y pues platicar de mi vida y pues de mi Okay, okay. So let's start at the very beginning, okay. Alan. Nice. Let's start start with your actual name if you're yeah. if you're mm -hmm. if you're comfortable with that. Your social security. Ah, <laughs> you're like your bank info, your wire info. Your password to your bank account. Imagine. So, yo me llamo Jose Alan Macias. So okay. that's my legal name. And then my stage name is Alanized, mm -hmm. um, which comes from my middle name. Y luego yo cuando empecé a hacer social media, I feel like I wanted something that was kind of like boom. Uh -huh. Like I didn't want to be like, oh, ahí va Jose Alan. You know what I mean? Right, like it just right, doesn't right. seem very like boom. So mm -hmm. then I created Alanized. I am 25 years old. I live in OC. Um, I in California and I've been doing social media ya por muchos años you guys ya hasta pelos en la cola tengo de cuantos años tengo haciendo esto I've yeah. been doing this since I was 17 Dude, yeah we were talking about that on the drive here and I was like man like because I thought you had started like five years ago yeah or like six years ago, but I didn't know it was that long no, ago. I like, started, you like an OG. That's, I started that's cool. so long ago in the beauty. Maybe mm. that's why you didn't see me a lot because right, I was right. more in the beauty space. Uh -huh. Cuando yo empecé, yo me dedicaba puros videos like doing my middle, li little makeup, but I wouldn't gotcha. talk. Uh -huh. People didn't even know how I like oh, spoke at the time. Talk? It was, it just, was like... just like tutorials with music. Mm. Oh, okay, and gotcha. then I dove in after that, after a couple years of that, um, I gained a lot of weight. So I felt like the beauty world wasn't really like my world anymore because at the uh -huh. time we're talking about like 2016 like the beauty standard was so much different than it is now mm. so i just felt como que no cabía and that's when i dove into like lifestyle and vlogging gotcha gotcha okay so let's start right at your childhood you mentioned that you came up with Alanized. Your actual name is Jose, which is crazy yeah. i didn't know that that's actually my first name so well, i can relate to you were like, i can relate to you because like i was going through the same thing i was like ah jose it kind of doesn't like yeah, it and there's like so many Jose's yeah. in the world. Exactly. So I was like, I need to stand out a little more. So that's why I came up with Jaco too. So that's that's, that's actually a pretty already. good name. That's actually a really right? good name. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like Jaco, I would have never thought that it was like Jose. Uh -huh, I feel like when exactly. people see me, like nunca en su vida se hubieran imaginado que Jose. They think of Alan uh -huh, because of exactly, Alan. Pero no yeah. les salgo con que, que me llamo Jose. <laughs> and they're like, no, pues por eso trae el pinche nopal en la frente. <laughs> ah, literally. And talking about nopal, I'm, I'm assuming your parents mm -hmm. are Mexican. Yes. Where were you born? So I. I, you know what's funny? This is the second video, not on my channel, where I actually talk about my actual upbringing because I've been uh -huh. doing this for a long time. And for a long time, I never really spoke or never really mentioned that I was born in Mexico. It uh -huh. was always something that oh, okay. I was super not embarrassed about, but I was super... Well, growing up in the States, in Papeles, it was always something super scary for oh, me to open gotcha. up about. So, right. cuando yo estaba chiquito, yo me traumé, and I never really spoke about it. So, yeah, I was born in Mexico, um, in Nayarit, in Santiago, mm -hmm. Escuincla. Um, and we came to the States very early on. Yo me acuerdo que yo empecé el kinder en México, uh -huh. and I ended up finishing up kinder here. 
So I think mm. I was about. Oh, so you came young, young. Yeah, I came super, super young. Yo llegué aquí como a los cinco, seis años. What's kinder? Hagan la matemática, sure. amigas. Ahorita <laughs> como yeah. que mi cerebro no me, no me está sirviendo, but I came super, super right, young. Though. Yeah, mm-hmm. so I started kinder here, and then I feel like my first, like, school experience was more first grade. Because I feel like uh-huh. in kinder, pues, I dibuja, I cantan, like, it's right. very, like, normal. But it wasn't until, like, first grade where I really was, you know, um... Mm-hmm you know, presented with, like, the bullying because I didn't know mm. English, where I was presented with, like, the paisa jokes, with the beaner jokes. So mm. I feel like that's why for a long time, yo nunca hablaba de donde nací, de donde vine. I feel like only the people in my first grade class knew that I was illegal. And then after uh-huh. that, I kind of was like, okay, I'm starting to clean slate. Right. Like, I'm not going to tell anyone. And, yeah, my childhood was pretty good. You know, for the most part, I grew up in Santa Ana. And I don't know, like, what more do you want to like? Tu, tu me yo cuento. Okay, yeah. So I would. I it's, it's good that you touch on the whole like being bullied and like um, you know being called like a beaner and stuff like that because I feel like nowadays it's like stuff that we mess around with like yeah. within our friend group, you know. Like, but back then, whenever it comes from somebody that isn't like didn't go yeah. through that struggle or isn't like you know the same skin tone as us or the same nationality as us, it, it like it hits. Different. It hits like, different. It, it, it really does something to you, like. Was that part of the reason why you were ashamed of, like, saying that you were from Mexico, too? Yeah, no, and 100%. I feel like it's very easy to, like, make a joke that doesn't apply to us Mm -hmm. and think it's funny. You know what I mean? Like, and and I've done it so many years. And that's why even as an adult now, yo nunca culpo a mis bullies. Like, I'm not going to go back and be like, fulano de tal used to bully me, fuck them. No, because we were children, you know? And Mm -hmm. I feel like even (laughs) me as a child or even me as an adult, I'll make jokes that to me are funny about, like, let's say I can be like, ah, ha, ha, like your curly hair is funny. Like, to Mm -hmm. me, it might be funny, but let's say you're insecure about it because it applies to you, it's going to hit you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I feel like for me, cuando me se burlaban de mí, like, obviamente, los niños se reían, like, ha, 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 no tiene papeles, o no sabe hablar español. Mm-hmm. But to me, it would hit home. So, after hearing that so much, and then after, you know, hearing a lot of even my close friends make fun of it, I feel like I got into a space where I was like, you know what? It must be wrong to be illegal in a place where, you know, being illegal is not seen as a great thing. You know, we see it in the news, que... You know, la migra, todo eso. Mm-hmm. So I feel like for me, it really did put me in a place where I was like, you know what? I can't tell anyone. Like, my, only my closest friends. And even till then, like, I hid it from, like, my high school friends, my middle school friends a lot. Like, uh-huh. it wasn't, it was like a big secret of mine and my oh, family. Man. At what age would you say you went from, like, being this kid who would share, like, oh, I'm from Mexico uh, and be, like, proud of that to, like, more, like, holding it back because of, like, that bullying? What, what At what age, if you had to pinpoint it, would you say you, like, stopped sharing that? Second grade. Second grade. Oh, I wow, think as soon that. as I started speaking English to the point where I was able to defend myself in English uh-huh. to where, like, I feel like no one was going to question where I was born. Because also keep in mind, when I started school, it was, like, first grade, right? Like, mm-hmm. everyone already knew basic English. Yo no sabía ni más. Like, I literally probably didn't even know. I probably only knew, like, hi. Pero me salía con acento, me salía bad. Uh So as soon as I learned the English language, I went straight into like, you know what? Like, if they don't need to know, I'm not going to tell them. And it even got to a point, like, I will sit down here and it sucks to say it. Like, there was times where, like, I would even deny it. Like, there was times where people would, like, ask me, like, oh, where were you born? I'd be like, oh, here. And they'd be like, where? I'm like, I don't know. I'm fucking Santa Ana. Like, I would fucking <laughs> laugh. Yeah, por allá, in the hospital. I'm like, I don't know why you asked me. Ask my mom. But I would hide it. And uh-huh. it wasn't up until, I want to say, a couple, online. I wasn't comfortable saying it this until, like, maybe a month ago. Oh, wow. I literally opened up online a month ago for so many years. People would always be like, Alan, because I, I go out a lot. Like, I go to, mm-hmm. like, travel within the States a lot. And siempre se me preguntaba, like, Alan, why don't you go to Mexico? Why don't you right. go here? Y yo siempre le echaba la culpa a mi novio. Because mm-hmm. él no tiene papeles tampoco, but he's always been vocal uh-huh. about it. So it was easier to be me, me to say, like, like oh, oh, my him. boyfriend, Alan, because <laughs> he's stopping us. I'm <laughs> talking too. No, it literally wasn't that. And... 
I feel like for a lot of years, yo como que tenía ese mismo problema con yo mismo because of how uh -huh. bad people would bully me, that I was like, I'm not going to let anyone make me feel any less. Mm -hmm. And that's why I fucking, you know, stopped sharing that. But as I got older, and now that I am who I am, I've learned to accept it because I look back and I think about, like, all the people that would make fun of me or all the people that, like would make themselves feel better because they have papers. A lot of these people that would make fun of me are like not doing anything with their lives now. And to me now I'm like I'm I like to say I'm successful, you know, I'm living my life and sin papeles o con papeles like I'm living my truth. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Esa gente con papeles que están haciendo nada. Ah, <laughs> no, shade, literally the though. Ah, the shade. But se tenía que decir eso. Uh -huh. Okay, so the early stages of your childhood here in America, bullying, you know, like a, a lot of hardships. Uh, would you say that once you like learned English and you started, you know, to be able to defend yourself, uh, the things changed that were you not bullied anymore? Where, when did the bully bullying stop? Funny story. I mm -hmm. talked about it maybe in the beginning of my career and then I kind of just like stopped touching on it. But after maybe like in fifth grade, ya cuando ya bien, ya me podía mm -hmm. defender, I started becoming a bully. You know, mm -hmm. yeah, it's crazy to think about it, but it just became one of those things where I'm like... I think mentally as a kid, I, you know, I was already getting bullied, one, for my weight, you uh -huh. know, two, for being illegal, three, for being gay, mm. because even though I was not out of the closet yet, like, se me notaba, yeah. and it got to a point where I started bullying people, you know, I started, it sucks to say, but it's the fucking reality, no, I started and, making feel, I started making people feel how they would make me feel. And I applaud you for admitting that, because, yeah, like, uh, I feel like, um, us like we tend to bring the people that do the bullying down but we don't realize that like they're only giving out what they've received yeah like the bu the bullies of this world like they they're only able to give out what they have received, received. whether it's from mm -hmm. their family from you know their parents their friends like all that hurt all, all those things that they have received they're the only way they know how to like take it out take it out is to like do it to other people and make other people feel less, less. just like they were felt you know made felt less i feel like my bullying era literally started like eighth grade to like junior year mm. that was when i was going hardcore i remember i know pobrecita muchachita que estar haciendo there was a girl that didn't like me right uh -huh. and for some reason like the bitch no me quería y yo también i was like well if you don't like me me too bitch ah! <laughs> and i remember like i used to like well not really bully her on her parents but like i used to like i remember in class i remember this one story she was doing a presentation y yo bien bully i be like can you speak louder Oh like the whole God. class wants to hear you. I was that bitch like I was like it's not even like funny and I'm not proud of it but like like you said it was very much porque yo sufrí mucho growing up that I felt like mm -hmm. okay well like if I turn into the people that are bullying me no one can harm me because there was a lot of times where like I was even scared to speak up to a bully mm -hmm. so then it became a thing of like damn if I'm scared and if I become the bully then these people are going to be scared to even call me out right. and I feel like when I became a bully um the bullying kind of stopped a little bit mm. from like the people that would bully me but then there came like older people and yeah. Empezó otra vez de nuevo. no yeah I, I love that you mentioned that because in a way it is uh like a defense mechanism yeah that it you is build in your mind where, where like okay if i'm the one doing the bullying then you know like people are going to be less likely to bully me so it, yeah you run into this whole mindset of like okay you know what let me stand up for myself and bring other people down so they don't bring me down it is like a wall that you yeah. build. But I want to go back a little bit more to your childhood. You mentioned how in fifth grade you were started started to get bullied because of, you know, you being gay. I, I'm, I'm sure that comes with a lot of struggles in itself. Yeah. What was that like? It was hard because, one, I never felt accepted at home by my father. Hmm. Um, even though now we have... Well, I can't, I can't sit down here and say we have a relationship because we don't. Mm -hmm. um, but he's there, right? Like, he's still with my mom. Like, cuando hay family parties. Hola, dad, ¿cómo está? Pero de que hay una relación como de que, ay, dad, mira, hice esto. Or, yeah. dad, this is what I'm up to. There's not, right? Mm -hmm. So, I always grew up with always feeling like it wasn't okay to be gay at home to start off with. And then I go on to school. And then I go on to, like, the real world. And, you know, I was getting hit with, like, pinche joto or, like, with these, like, big words that now I'm able to take them and, like, use them, like, proudly. Like, mm -hmm. I can sit here and be like, yeah, I'm a joto. Like, I don't care. But, like, back then, they would really affect me. And as a right. child, you know, it was funny because um, in eighth grade, no, sixth grade, that's when I feel like I started seeing more of the bullying. I was really good friends with one of the soccer players. And we were, like, 
really good friends, like bestie vibes, right? Mm -hmm. And when I entered middle school, pues yo me juntaba con él and all the soccer guys. And at first it was funny because me and that one guy, we were like the leaders of the whole group. Like caminábamos and they would all follow us. Uh -huh. But entre el grupo, they would always be like, oh, he's kind of like sus, like he's gay, mm -hmm. like algo, algo tiene. And I would always obviously deny it. I had una que otra girlfriend. I think I had like seven girlfriends to try to like, uh -huh. yeah, about seven girlfriends to try to like oh, prove sure. them wrong. Like, oh no, yo soy vato, like whatever. <laughs> and yeah, it was, it was intense because I think it, it also was the start of my anxiety mm -hmm. because a lot of people would come up to me like, are you gay? But like very much like out of nowhere, like you'd be having right. like, a, oh, what's up? And they're like, oh, you're gay. Mm. And that would cause me so much anxiety when anyone would ever start talking about like sexuality or like relationships. I remember que me sudaba mucho la mano and I would start getting anxiety because I was like, I already know where this combo is going. Right. So I feel like that was like the start of my anxiety and like the bullying. I feel like the bullying just got crazier then. I remember there was like an app called Ask FM mm -hmm. and that's where a lot of the bullying came from. Like a lot of people would bully me like anon anonymously. Oh my God. So it would be like, they'd send me like paragraphs telling me all this shit about being gay. And I feel like for a long time it did hurt and it would get to me because, well, you know. I mean, how could it not? I mean, man, from, from what you're saying, like, I, I try to put myself in your shoes and I'm just like, man, like, there's just, like, all types of rejection and bullying yeah. from all sides. Like, I feel like you don't, you don't feel loved and, like, I feel like that's something we all seek is that feeling of, like, feeling loved, whether it's from, from anybody, you know, but I feel like... You know, you're even you mentioned your dad not not you know like fully like embracing you and like loving you, regardless of anything. Like I, that does something to yeah, a kid, it does. you know, and um and not only to a kid, but you know even as an adult, like if like because you know if me and my my dad or me and my mom aren't okay, like it just it's something that's in the back of my mind all the time. Like man, like we're not good, you know, like we're fighting right now or whatever. So having that be something that like you know goes on and carries on for so long i can only imagine how how that is so uh how do you deal with uh the whole situation with your dad now like have have you healed from that like it, have you tried to like better the thing like how how is that like it's hard um you know i feel like recently i've been a little bit more vocal about that just because i don't know why i just feel like it's a part of me and it's like why fucking deny it you know like my dad mm -hmm was the way he was with me and that's that um i feel like as, as an adult i've learned to kind of like heal myself and kind of forgive him for the better of myself you know what i mean because for a long time like i'm telling you like okay so my grandma which is my dad's mom i've always been her favorite right like okay. Ella siempre me defendía de mi papá. Like, if my dad... My dad was always very physical, right? Mm -hmm. Like, very physical. He was all, He's always been an alcoholic to this day. Mm -hmm. um, so, I grew up with him hitting my mom, hitting us. Um, like, just being terrified of him when he's under the influence, you know? So, for a long time... And then, put in, you know, put in perspective that I have two older brothers, and they're straight up, like, machos. Like, very, like, man. They're, they're mm -hmm. straight, you know, straight man. And then I had my sister, which was the only girl. So when it came to the love my dad was giving, he was giving a lot of the love to my sister because she was the única mujer. Right. And then a lot of the love to my older siblings um, because, well, he was able to relate. Like, they were like, oh, vamos a trabajar, let's do this. Mm -hmm. Like, they were into the masculine stuff, you know. So there's a chiquito, I always felt rejection by decirte que a lot of times, like, my dad... And it sounds so stupid because you're going to be like, really, bro, you're like, like, it triggers, like, como les digo, like, the chiquito, like, I would see him, like, give my siblings, like, money que para gastar, que para esto in front of me. And mm -hmm. I know it sounds so dumb. It's like, bro, like, just because he didn't give you money. But it's like those little acts, like, I'd be like, oh, yeah, me, dad, like, oh, because, like, uh -huh. for school, he'd be like, oh, not you. No, so I'd go to my mom, yeah. and my mom me daba todo. And it's, it's not small at all, because... It is just money, but it's not about the money. It's about the the act. Like yeah, the like I'd be like, oh, so like a, I don't feel like I'm a part of yeah, you. Yeah, it's a form of rejection, you know. Like it's it's not really about the money. It's about the action that he's taking. Of like he's doing this for these people, but he's not doing it for, for you. me. Why? Yeah, and then I mm -hmm. feel like it got bad to the point where I always say this, but it really was that bad to the point where like yo ya no nos podíamos ver. Like it was, my mom would never make us eat in the same table. Ever. Like, I remember middle school going, maybe, like, starting eighth grade, me and my dad stopped having a proper meal together because 
the anger and the hate that I had towards him was so big. Que nomás el mirarlo comer. Because my dad was like a... I, I like to say it's funny because like I grew up hating it and I've become him. Uh, my dad le, sabe saborar su comida. So like when he would be eating, he'd be like, like fucking get limon and he'd be like sucking the limon. <laughs> Pero eso de niño me fastidiaba. Like I'd be like, can you eat fucking right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. No, yo, yo pienso que de niño, like, I hated him so much. Que yeah, like, any era, yeah like any little thing, mm -hmm. like me fastidiaba. Like even look, I'm literally getting like chills just talking about my dad right now. Um, and I feel like I was like, you know what? Like it is what it is. Al fin del día, my dad can be whatever the fuck he was. Pero un padre lo fue porque a mí nunca me faltó techo, nunca me faltó right. comida, nunca me faltó lo que yo necesitaba, no más amor. Mm -hmm. So I feel like now as an adult, like, lo perdoné, but it's just hard to try to rebuild a relationship where I just feel like él ni él mismo se quiere. You know, like, there's been times where, like, we'll tell him, like, can you please, like, stop doing what you're doing? You know, it, it's sad. I, I, I talk to my boyfriend all the time, and I'm like, I just wish I had a relationship with him. Pero a veces no se puede. Si uno no se quiere amar, pues cómo va a dejar que otra gente lo ame. Yeah, and I wanna, I wanna applaud you and commend you for saying that you forgave him. You know, no, I did, I yeah. Like, I feel like that's a huge thing that, that we have to learn because it's the beginning of your healing. It's yeah. like until you're able to forgive that person that did you wrong or that you have that resentment towards, until you're able to forgive them fully, you won't be able to able heal to. because you know that anger that resentment is always going to be inside of you and it's going to hold you back from like fully healing yeah. but i do want to like tell you too that like it's the same idea you know over and over again of like you're only able to give what you receive like i don't know what your dad's childhood was like or you i, I don't know yeah. if you know what his childhood was like but he's only able to give you the type of love that, that he, he knows that he knows how to give because the way that we're supposed to love every single human being is supposed to love is unconditional yeah that's that i'm a big follower of the bible and the bible tells you that we're supposed to have unconditional love for one another which means that your love your your love the love that i give you yeah. shouldn't be earned yeah like no matter if you treat me wrong no matter if you do me wrong like no matter what I, I i still need to love you and that's that's the way that god wants us to love one another and that's the way that every father should love and i feel like the role of a father is so important because uh they're they're i feel like both father and mother the role as parents is to love yeah. like yeah providing is, is a necessity and everything but at the end of the day if you provide but you don't you don't give that love then you 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 know like you're missing a big part a big part yeah because if if the roles are reversed you know like if you show love but you aren't able to provide as a parent it's not as bad because you know you receive that love, love. You, you know the provision is always going to come eventually you know? and i always say that like it's it's exactly what you said like you don't know what he went through and i feel like so a couple of years ago when i started my healing journey with letting go of things that like traumatized me from my childhood so before a little thing um i've kind of never really have talked about it but Aquí me siento. Ya, ya estoy hablando de más, so chingue su madre. Um, <laughs> when I was little, before I came to the States, I was actually numerous times sexually abused, you know. We're talking about before I even started kinder. Um, in Mexico. Um, and for a long time, eso me traumó. For a long time, eso lo tenía on the back of my head. Like, did I become gay because of that? Is that why, you know, my dad doesn't love me? Is that why this or that? So when it came down a couple years ago of letting go of you know, me getting sexually abused as a child and then, you know, going through whatever I went through with my dad, when it was time to let go of those two big things that held me back as an adult, I remember I speak to my grandma and I was like, grandma, like, why is my dad like that? Like, why is he not affectionate? Why is he only a provider? And mm -hmm. I really was very like, why is he not affectionate towards me? Because I, I do have to say to this day, I blame it on like, my sexuality because he was always super affectionate with my two siblings and my and my sister and to me but let me let me stop you real quick i don't want you to blame it on your sexuality you know because i feel like if you were to have to blame it on anything it shouldn't be on you it, it should be on him because if somebody isn't able to love, love yeah fully regardless of anything the issue isn't yeah. on you it's, it's him. on somebody else so yeah I, I just wanted to stop you there and Make, make you really understand that like if, if he wasn't able to love you because of that 
it's something in him, him, in him not that you. he needs to work. He needs to love you regardless. You're his son. You know? Yeah, no, and, and yeah. I agree. And I, uh, But for muchos años, yo me culpaba. You know, like, I why did God make me like this? Why, you know, for you know, people tell you, like, do you choose to be gay? Or, you know, like, that's like a question everyone always asks someone who is part of the LGBT community. Yo por mucho tiempo, I was like, well, desde que yo sé, I've always been like this. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So when I speak to my grandma, and I was like, how was my grandpa with my dad growing up? And... Rest assured, my, my grandpa was a provider, 100%. You know, like, mm -hmm. my grandma tells me to this day, like, there was no time back in the day. I mean, there was, but I feel like times are different. Like, where men didn't feel like there was any time to be with the kids. Like, their main role was provide, work, provide, work, provide, work, work, work. work, work y luego váyanse por las chelas. Yeah, you know what I mean? Do, if you do that, like, you're good. Like, yeah, you like, that was there. And that's it. So that's yeah. when I started seeing that this, I, I tell my grandma, I was like, this is just a cycle. Because my grandma was always big on, like, ¿Qué te hizo tu papá? And I was like, grandma, like, it's nothing that he did. It's just actions that you grew up with as a kid. Like, he can be a good son, but as a father, as a husband, like, he maybe wasn't all that great, you know? So when my grandma me dijo todo eso de su infancia de mi papá, it clicked. And that was when me at my 22, 21 years old, that's when I was like, you know what? I'm going to let go of whatever resentment I have for my father. I'm going to let go Absolutely. of all the trauma I have because of me getting sexually assaulted when I was a kid. Why? Not for them. Not for mm -hmm. their better, but mm -hmm. for my better. Because I feel like it was taking up a big toll of me and I couldn't be happy. And... That's what I did, and I feel like it helped a lot. That. It really did help a lot, and it it became a thing where it was like, hazlo por ti. A hundred percent, yeah, and that's that's what I wanted to touch on is that it it really isn't for them. It isn't for their sake. Like, it, more, more importantly, it's for you because yeah. it's like I mentioned before. Like, you won't really truly start healing until you you're able to do that. And I commend you because I know it's not easy. Yeah. I know it's not easy to forgive somebody that did you wrong, somebody that you expected something opposite from. But you received, you know, the opposite in return. So I applaud you for that. That's that's amazing. Thank you for opening up about that. Uh, what is some advice that you would give to people that have dealt with similar things like that uh, so that they're able to, you know, because I'm pretty sure there's people watching that are currently going through that, currently finding out how to heal. And one thing that I would always get bothered by because I would always go to church and they would always say like, oh, you guys need to heal. You need to heal. You need to heal. But they would never say how. So yeah. I would always be like, Okay, but like how? Like when is when is somebody gonna explain how to heal? Because we all have things yeah. to heal from, but we just don't know. What, what what were some steps you took in order to heal from you know that sexual abuse and from that neglect from your dad? I think first of all, like for me, for my healing journey specifically, because I can give you guys advice and if it doesn't apply, you're not gonna take it, you know. But mm -hmm. for me specifically, was really realizing what was the problem and what is holding you back from being happy because I feel like as children like there's a lot of things that scar us and we continue to deal with them throughout our whole life and we never really like acknowledge them and try to like not like find a solution but really like cope with them like a lot of people like that go through sexual abuse or a lot of people that go through like daddy issues or mommy issues or whatever issues they go through it's kind of more like forget about it forget mm -hmm. about it but the more you try to forget about it the more you know you live with it you yeah. know what i mean so for me it was very important to like realize why i couldn't be happy and to me when i came down to asking myself like what's holding you back what is not allowing you to be happy and for me it came down to like one um my father's situation and two okay so this is my trauma too with like my being sexually assaulted story when i told the people of okay me never opening about it me opening up i am y'all getting all the no so my trauma with my sexual assault story was never it was more of i hated when i would tell people and they'd be like, ooh, but you're gay. You must have liked that. Mm -hmm. And to me, I'm like, bitch, I wasn't even in kinder. So you're telling me someone that's five, whether they turn out to be gay or not, is going to like it? Like, I'm not going to lie. I feel like someone, as someone that was, you know, sexually assaulted as a kid, you... Mood, is this like too tall? Is it too strong to talk about? Or like, no, do you no, don't no, care? not at all. It's, um, but yeah, I want to touch on that. It's like, it's like saying to somebody that's straight, like, oh, you must have liked being R word yeah. because you're straight. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes yeah. No sense. So to me, it was very much, fuck, what was I going to say with that? So to me, when people would tell me that, I was like, no, like, I still feel 
are. You know what I mean? Like, I still feel like I was... A, a big part of my childhood was taken away from me because I'm not going to lie, you guys. Like, I think back as an adult and I think about how I would act as a child. There was times where, like, I would look for my aggressor. You know what I mean? Like, like they started this aggression, but because I was a child and I don't know what was about it, that there was times that I would look for my aggressor. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So I feel like it fucked me up mentally so bad as a child and when I became an adult and people would tell me like oh well you came out gay you must have liked it it would have been fun and I was like no that's not the point the point is that I feel like there was a big part of my childhood that was kind of like arrebatado from me yeah. and I can't I don't know what a childhood would have been with an innocence do you get what I mean like I don't know what my childhood would have looked like with innocence so for a long time I was always dwelling on that like oh fuck how was my childhood would have been if that wouldn't have happened or how would it been if like the aggressor wouldn't have never done that and when I when I'm, I'm telling you when I was trying to heal from that I was very big on you know what like stop thinking about what it would have been or mm -hmm. stop thinking about how that's affecting you think about how you can use that and spin it and live your life happy you know what I mean? Because I can sit here and dwell on it the rest of my life. And all I'm going to do is cause myself anxiety, cause myself depression, cause myself, you know, to be closed yeah. off. But I was like, no, eso no lo voy a hacer because yeah. me estoy impidiendo to be happy. Yeah, and it, it already took a big chunk of your childhood. So why are you going to allow it to take your whole life? I feel like that, that's, that's very important that you touch on that. It's having that ability to be able to spin it. And use it for you know something good rather than just let it ruin your whole life and yeah. dwell on that your whole life. I I commend you for that because I know it's not easy. I know it's you know something very traumatic that is not easy to get past. And I commend you for that. How uh, let's 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 say this: if you were able to go back to your childhood self, right, to little Josecito, and tell him one sentence, what would it be? That. Everything will be okay. You know, like, seeing where my life is now, I feel like I would tell him to just go through with everything. You know, I feel like, although I went through so much sh Oh, my God, not me getting emotional. You know, it's funny, this, like, all therapy. I, I never really talk about, like, my feelings or anything. I feel like I would just tell him to just continue and everything's going to be okay because... And one thing I will say... Living my life how I lived and everything I've gone through, I don't think I'd change anything because even though, you know, I went through really hard things in my life, I feel like it all made me who I am today. And, you know, I do want to say that regardless of everything I've gone through, I I am a good, I like to say I'm a good human being, you know what I mean? Like I have a great heart. I've learned to forgive. I've learned to you know accept myself and others and i feel like that wouldn't have been the case if i wouldn't have gone through every little obstacle that i've gone through since growing up so an advice i would give is just know everything's gonna be okay and god has a plan that's cool that's funny good. story about my childhood too mm -hmm. i know you're big and in, in god you know that I, I which is funny because i feel like after even having you and Valentina on the podcast and seeing how, like, I, I, I swear to God, like, I went, not home because I was already home, mm -hmm. but when you guys left, I literally was talking um, to my boyfriend and to my friend, and I was like, they're so inspirational in the way you guys found God, because when I was little, I was so into God. I used to, uh -huh. me castiga, when I was in Mexico, my mom me castigaba to not go rosar, rezar de rosario with my grandma. No so I used to be so metido into church. I uh -huh. used to um, come out in the peligraciones. There were like the parades as uh -huh. Jesus Christ. Like uh -huh. I was like him. Like wow. I was so into Jesus. Like it's crazy. Like even my tias like will think back now. I'm like, damn, he was so into God. Like he was. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as an adult, I want to be able to find God again. But I think for a long time. Um, the reason why, you know, I stepped away was because I always never felt after I started coming out and I started being me and I started being who I was, I never really mm. felt accepted at church. Mm. Like, you know, people say go to church, how I grew up with, you know, going to church, arreglate and feel the best you can mm. and go to church, like present yourself to God the best that you can. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Like, um, and to me as an adult, like the best that I am is like with a little bit of makeup or like this and mm seeing all those stares that I would get 
like would make me feel uncomfortable. So like right. I feel like for a long time me separé de Dios and I mean I haven't started the journey to finding him, but you know, I feel like as I get older, I feel like I do want to, you know, find Jesus. Mm -hmm. And that's important that you bring that up because I feel like a lot of people can relate to you with that because a lot of a lot of people deter, deter like they like um get away from God because they like experience something either with like people at church or like you know they're they're given like dirty looks when they go to church and it's so sad because you know like um uh, uh at the end of the day you know like you correlate those people that are at church with god but the thing is that like those people are just people at the end of the mm -hmm. day you know like those people like they have their own things that they have to deal with if they're judgy like that's something that they, yeah, have, they have to work to on their, themselves but what i would suggest you to do is you know like no matter what like don't don't allow like people's actions to affect like your relationship with God because at the end of the day those are just simply people and it's not on God what they do like God gave them the ability to do whatever they want with their lives and if they're choosing to judge people or you know like be hateful then that's that's, that's on, on them, them you know like but that that's what they're choosing to do thankfully we all have you know free will and our abilities to be able to do whatever we want with our lives but I just wanted to say that because that that's something that I, I like really like speak against it's like you know like us Christians like being like like that like being like judging and pushing people away from God rather than like allowing them to like come as you are because Jesus came to this world for the sick yeah. like he said it clearly he's like he's he was here for the sick he wasn't here for the perfect people like he wasn't here collecting perfect people like jesus came here and he he was like you know dining with like yeah. prostitutes and like the the drunk people like he came for the for the sick as he called yeah. it and so i just wanted to encourage you you know to just they're, they're, they say it all the time but it's true like come as you are yeah and to me also as an adult um I think another thing que me alejó mucho de Dios y la iglesia, because I'm telling you, like, yo de chiquito, like, I was so metido. Like, mm -hmm. I'm telling you, my mom used to ground me by not going to church. Uh -huh. And yo me le escapaba. Like, I would go <laughs> get out of the house and go to the Rosarios. Yeah. I would go to church. Um, and I feel like and as, an, as an adult, one thing that also me alejó mucho was I grew up with the idea of God loves everyone. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, one thing I didn't agree on with the church was that, you know, I mean, the simple fact that I couldn't marry in a church. Yeah. And to me, a, a big part of my life is, you know, who I am, my sexuality, you know what I mean? So there was another another conflict of like, okay, if I can't get married in church because, you know, it's not, como te digo, like, it's not normal. And, you know, like, mm -hmm. it, you can't get married. Like, gay people can't get married in church. So to me, it's like, si Dios tanto me quería... Uh -huh. Like, why is that not, why is that prohibited? And right. I feel like now I'm more like, I have a relationship with God because I also did learn growing up that you don't have to go to church to have a relationship with God. Mm, um, so I feel like now as an adult is like the whole idea of church be for a lot of reasons scare me and just kind of, I'm more of like, if I'm going to have a relationship with God, I can have that relationship at home. You know what right. I mean? Yeah, you, you can have it, yeah, essentially anywhere, especially Literally. now that we have, you know, things like YouTube, you're able to just watch a sermon at, at, at um, home Google, on the yeah. TV or anything. But I would encourage you to find a church, you know, that you feel comfortable in. I know there is plenty of churches out there that, because there, as, as much as there is churches that will make you feel comfortable, there's churches that you will feel uh, uncomfortable. uncomfortable at. Yeah. So it's all about just finding that right church for you. Uh, because, and the reason why I would suggest you to go is because, there's there's just like something powerful about like so many people that believe in god coming together to like learn about him and yeah. get closer to him so because i've experienced a lot of things like at, at church that I, I wouldn't have experienced at home and vice versa you know so the two are important and they go hand in hand but yeah i want i want to encourage you to just you know keep chasing after god uh don't don't let like you know like people's actions or pe people's like looks whatever it is like that's like deter that yeah. that relationship that like you're you have there for god, god not yeah, for that, the people, yeah that love that you that you had for him as as a child like bring it back you know like god at the end of the day god god wasn't the one that you know did anything bad to, to you, you. Yeah. he unfortunately you know he gave us free will and he didn't want us to be robots he gave us the ability to do good as well as evil because that's just what comes with freedom you know yeah. when somebody and I, I touch on that because a lot of people will question like man like 
if God is real, like, why did he allow, like, this to happen to me? Us to go through this or that, yeah. Right, and the reason I always tell people is that because he gave us the gift of free will. Like, if if he were, if he were to stop all evil, then it wouldn't be free will, you know, yeah. because let's say I want to, like, slap myself right now, but God stops me from doing it, then I'm controlled. I'm being controlled. Yeah. It's not really free will. But... And that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. You know? Have you ever thought about being a pastor? Because I <laughs> feel like I, 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 I genuinely <laughs> feel like I, I swear to God, you guys, like it's not even because it's on video and I feel like I've been opening up mm-hmm. because of like the way you are. Like you, you make you feel like you're like, okay, relájate and just déjalo uh-huh. todo salir. <laughs> like, <laughs> swear to God. Said, dude, like so many people have told me that. And for a while, like a lot of my subscribers were like, just like calling me like Pastor Jacob, Pastor yeah. Jacob. So that's funny that you say that. I mean, I'm not close to anything. If it happens, it happens, you know. But I do genuinely love people and I love God because, like I said yeah. in your podcast, because I've seen what he has done for my life and it's been nothing but good. And so that's what motivates me to, like, get people closer to God. It's just I've experienced a new level of happiness and joy and I just want other people to, to experience, experience that. And that's beautiful. And, that, yeah. and And I swear to God, after I interviewed you and Valentina, like, you guys had me thinking about, like, my childhood a lot in the mm-hmm. sense of, like, why did I put God on the back burner? You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, if a lot of the things I've done now and all the accompli- accomplishments I've achieved now are because of him, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But I feel like I put him on the back burner because of the wrong reasons. Like you said, I let everyone else affect my relationship with him. And I don't know. I, I'm not saying that que un día del otro, you know, I'm going to find Jesus. But mm-hmm. that's one of the things as I get older that I really do want to do, you know, like get closer to him. Yeah. And and, and it's definitely a marathon. You know, it's, yeah. it's not a race. It's not something like you say that happens from one day to another. Like there's things I'm still working on and I'm going to be working on for the rest of my life because you'll never get to a place of like, oh, I'm perfect. Yeah. Never, ever, ever. So, yeah, it's just like, you know, day by day, the more you the more time you spend with God, the more time you're allowing him to work in you and make you that better version of yourself. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I I definitely encourage you that. Now, if you had to describe your childhood using one word, what would it be? Mm. Uh, That one's hard because although I had a lot of bad moments in my childhood, I also had a lot of like amazing moments. I would definitely describe it as a wild card. Like a wild card, like like some days were amazing, some days were traumatizing, some days Uh were like, wow, best day of my life. Some days were like, wow, like, por que estoy aquí? You know what I mean? Uh Like, I would definitely think it very much like a wild card. Like, you never knew what to expect as a child growing up. Wow, that, yeah. that's, I feel like that. I would have never thought of that. Like that's, that, that's, that, that's how I describe it. my childhood. Like I feel like there's so much to me that I have. That's why I say like everything, everything I've gone through, whether it's good or bad, I feel like have contributed have contributed in some way, shape, or form to who I am today, to the mm-hmm. person that people see online, right. or even to the person not the people see online, but the people in my real life see in person. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Because at the end of the day, there's things that people that ha- see me online don't get to see because. You know, well, no son la gente que confío en 100%. Yeah. You know what I mean? If that makes any sense. Even though I love y'all. But there's some things que pues no nomás puedes andar diciéndolos a, a los siete vientos. Mm-hmm. And I, lo- I love that you say that because I feel like it does encourage people that are currently going through like a rough spot to just like keep going because... I mean, you would go back and just yeah. tell your younger self, you know, just keep going, keep keep doing what you're doing. So that's encouragement for you guys to whatever you're going through, just keep going. Keep, keep going. going. Let me park the car a little bit. Yeah, because it's like, huh. And then it's also getting hot. So yeah, it's one getting second, hot, guys. guys. We're gonna... La combo está buena. <laughs> yeah, it is. Fun. Me all therapy. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we are, we are back. We missed a lot of juicy stuff behind yeah, cameras. Yeah, literally. Ahorita <laughs> cuando nos estábamos viendo el carro, we were like, am I saying too much? Like, si, sí, estoy hablando de más, cállame. Ah. But he's like, no, it's good that you're opening up because mm-hmm. I feel like people get to see like a different aspect of you. And I feel like that's true yeah. because me miran en el desmadre, que, oh, la familia me teche. Like, yeah, and they think know. that, wow, like, damn, he's crazy. But like, yeah. it's like a lot of shit that I've gone through that I feel like I'm comfortable. And, you know, I mean, I've been doing this shit for so long and, I also do want to say it has a lot to do with you. Like, like that's what I'm telling you. Like, you give a sense of comfortability. Because I've you, been doing this you. shit for so long and I never really have talked about it, like, in depth like that on my own socials. Thank you. That, that means a lot. And I wanted to touch a little bit on what on another thing that I told you, too, is that I told him that he needs to be, like, uh, uh, what's it called? Like, cuando estás... 
proud yeah, that like you're proud, gonna be uh -huh. more proud of like telling your story because it like it holds power yeah. like the story that you have has the power to encourage so many people out there that are going through the same exact thing like i guarantee you there's at least one person watching this who has gone through that who is dealing with like dark stuff currently and are you know like taking this like um what's it like they're the, the option of like like they don't have life. yeah yeah like they don't have like to them it may be like the last straw yeah like, like they're going through a hard yeah, time like the option of giving up is there for them and just being able to hear somebody that went through the same exact thing say that it gets better and that you are able to like get past it is so much motivation yeah. and it's 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 something that you're able to do that i would never be able to do because i never went through something like that so like I'm telling you, your story holds so much power, and you. you know you need to you need to share it to encourage others. It's part of our Who purpose as yeah. humans. No, yeah. yeah. And uh, okay, so we touched a little bit on your childhood. Amazing, amazing. Thank you for opening up so much in the way that you did. I promise you, like, there's people out there that needed to hear that. Uh, so now let's move on to your high school experience. What what was that like? I want to say my high school experience was pretty cool. You know, aside from the bullying, aside from Alan being a little bully himself too, I, I feel like it was pretty cool. You know, I, I, you know, I went to Santa Ana High School. For those that are familiar with the OC, I went to Santa Ana High School, which is actually the oldest school in Southern California. Mm, was, um, was it ugly then since it was like so No, old? it was actually really pretty. Oh, really? It was actually they renovated it? I mean, yeah, over the years, it's mm. gotten better, and it's 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 like a historical school. Gotcha. Um, so I want to say I went to high school there my freshman to my sophomore year. Then I moved um, my senior year mm. to Anaheim High School, which is the second oldest school in, you know, all of Orange County. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where I met my boyfriend and my best friend. Uh. So I feel like... You know, like I said, <laughs> shitter meant to be. It's funny because the reason mm -hmm. why I moved was because we were getting evicted. Mm -hmm. uh, my parents couldn't afford rent um, in Santa Ana because although Santa Ana is known to be one of the most ghettoest cities in all of Orange County, it's also one of the most expensive ones. Mm -hmm. um, the cost of living there is just really expensive. And there was a time where, like, they fired my dad and con la Home Depot nomás, nomás tenía trabajo en la Home Depot y pues... And I'm not talking about he was employed by Home Depot. No, I'm talking, I don't know if mm, wherever you're from, yeah, where yeah, los que yeah. se paran afuera, afuera yeah. like the chalanes. My dad yeah. was that for so many years. Um, and we moved to Anaheim. And I feel like my, I mean, for the most part, I had a lot of fun during high school. I feel like I also had a lot of liberties because um, my my siblings were already like, out of the house they were so i think older, my parents yeah. well, mainly my mom no quería que me le fuera mm -hmm. so she was like dándome todas las libertades yo quería salir a medianoche i would mm -hmm. it was even crazy because even on school days bitch i would get up like at nine o'clock and like leave and i wouldn't come until the next morning man you were on like the, you were the type day. of kids i was jealous of yeah no it was, was crazy because like, like, i wish i could do that my sister and my siblings were like damn they, he, he, they were so easy on him but it was because mm -hmm. like i'm sure my mom was like no quiero que se me vaya y todavía me le fui <laughs> it had to happen anyways so i, I want to touch on your career now is the high school time around the time when it started yeah um i started doing social media so i started getting into makeup because yo tenía una amiga tengo una amiga se llama dalia shout out to dalia um at the time she was um going through a lot of like hormonal acne mm -hmm. like bad like i'm talking to the point where like it was like a big insecurity and like it was oh. so bad to the point where like even me as a friend i couldn't be like girl it's not that bad because mm -hmm. it was Cause bad like, ah you know what i mean like yeah, yeah, i couldn't yeah. lie You'd either bitch yeah. like i gotta be real with her so yo me acuerdo cuando íbamos a fiestas ella se arregla. she was always a glam girl though like uh -huh. glam like i'm talking about b like pound of foundation like good <laughs> like, but like la cosa con ella era de que se transformaba en una manera de que yo quedaba como de que wow mm. like even my mom cuando la miraba así transformada y decía mija que te hiciste como le haces it was like a big like oh so she was good like then. girl was good and mm. i'm like damn this bitch like yeah. how is she doing it just with all this makeup uh -huh. right one day she gives me a little bb cream uh -huh. um i still remember it's from it's an all may bb cc cream um which is kind of like crema with foundation it's not really heavy it's very like it's supposed to act oh, like okay. a lotion but with tint tint oh, and moisturizer so it's like a moisturizer oh yeah okay there you go. so it's very like to even out the skin uh -huh. tone me regalo eso um and for those of you guys that know like 
I used to steal at Target with her. So, <laughs> ella me lo re, no, ni lo compro. Me, se lo robó for me. And, uh, and she gifted it to me. And I remember I applied it one time home. And even just seeing how it trans... Obviously, like, at the time, like, I look back at pictures and I'm like, bro, what the fuck are you doing? Like, you look crazy. <laughs> but, like, to me at the time, I was like, wow, yeah. like, I look crazy different, like, in a good way. Mm -hmm. And I started getting into makeup, right? Mm -hmm. I started getting into makeup. I wasn't out of the closet yet. We're talking about junior year and I wasn't uh -huh. out of the closet yet. That's crazy, right? So and I was already out, like... Would, like you, would you wear it, like, just at home or would you wear it out too? So, I was out at school, but I wasn't out at home. So, uh, when I started stealing at Target, ah, the car's like all failing on us. <laughs> when I started stealing at Target, um, I started like having my little collection built up. Uh -huh. Yo no tenía no shoebox under my bed. Mm. So, whenever I would practice on my makeup, my um, we used to live in a kind of like a feita house and the, the, the llave no servia. So uh -huh. what I would do is I would put a chair as like, uh, like, to, yeah, like yeah. to not have no one come in, so right? Engineer and Literally, everything. I was fucking putting the camera in front of the door. <laughs> no, it was that bad. So I was able to practice. So I started practicing and I wasn't out of the closet yet. No, actually, I started practicing and then I get caught, right? I uh -huh. get caught stealing at Target. My mom gets called by the cops. They have to go pick me up. And that weekend, I came out to them. So after I come out, I start fucking taking... No, after I come out, I start wearing makeup, right? I start wearing to school, my little eyeliner, little chafita makeup. <laughs> and one day I was like, you know what? I'm just going to come out to like all the people that follow me. Like the people that have me on my Instagram. Oh, social um, media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was very much like, oh, I'm just going to come out to like the people that follow me from school. Just uh -huh. so they know, right? But not to get context. Were you on social media already? Or no, 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 no. no, no. Okay. I had like my maybe like 500 followers or gotcha. even like a thousand followers. But at the time, the reason why I had that many, not that I knew a thousand people. But it, I don't know if you remember back in the day when people would be like, follow for follow. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it was <laughs> like, I, I'd be following a thousand people and like. I'd be probably following like 3,000 people and only like 1,000 people were following me back, uh -huh. you know? So it was very much like I wasn't on social media. It was just me more like trying to have online friends. Mm -hmm. I posted a picture and I also posted a little video of me doing my little makeup, uh -huh. like a little tutorial. And I was like, yeah, I chinga su madre. Like that's uh -huh. going to be me coming out to them. Were it's nervous like, before doing that? No, because I was already out to like my close, close friends. Uh -huh. So it was just very much like I was doing it much. So like if other people ever see me with a guy or ever see me doing with makeup, it's like, why are you going to even ask me? Like, uh -huh. I think since I grew up with everyone always like confronting me, like, are you gay? Are you gay? Are you gay? That was my moment of being like, bro, did you not see? Like, why am I wearing makeup? You think it's like for fun? Like, yeah, right, I'm a straight right, boy right. wearing makeup. Whatever. Fall asleep. The next morning I wake up with like. 10, 20, 30,000 followers from that video. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, this Yo, should blow up. insane, actually. I get reposted by Huda Beauty, which to you <laughs> right now, you're like, what the fuck is that? Huda Beauty <laughs> is a makeup brand, but at the time, uh -huh. they were a reposting page. Before they turned into mm. a makeup brand, they were the biggest reposting page ever. Think uh -huh. about, um, what's that one big reposting page nowadays that, like, has, like, a lot of cheese uh, in it? Like, like Barstool? No, no, there's like a big. Oh, the one? No, 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 no. It's like a big, like, like page where a lot of celebrities, like. TMZ. Like think about it, TMZ, but it wasn't the TMZ. shade room. The shade room. The shade room. <laughs> think about it, the shade room, uh, but for the makeup people. Uh, so like for you to be reposted on this page, like girl, you were popping. Like, mm, so I get like reposted. Official. Yeah, we're talking about 2015, 2016. No, 2015. Boy, boys in makeup wasn't a big thing. Uh -huh. So, um, I get reposted. So there was like a lot of hate in the comments, but because of that page, I also got exposed to a lot of people that started following me. Mm -hmm. So así empecé. Empecé con ese video that wasn't supposed to be what it was. And I gained my first 10, 20, 30,000 followers. I don't remember. Oh my goodness. And that's... I was like, whatever, this is fun. Like, it's me practicing my makeup, continue doing it. But it I... was your, f I, I love that you touched on that because it was your first taste of like what social media could, could do. It literally was, yeah. It was, it was crazy, whatever. I fucking um, post, keep posting. We move apartments because um, I don't think I took off until I was at, in Anaheim already. Because remember, I told you I grew up in Santa Ana and then I moved uh -huh. to Anaheim. So then another day, I when I moved to Anaheim, I was like, you know what? Whatever. Full force, full force, full force. Um, I had my little like 30K followers and I was like, ah, eh, like I have a following, you know? Mm -hmm. Started posting it again, posted a video, fell asleep, um, woke up to 50K. And I was like, who fucking reposted me? 
Oh. I go check up up Hero Beauty, nothing. I check up on all the other big reposting pages like Brian Champagne. If you guys remember the beauty page, y'all, the beauty era, era y'all know what I'm talking <laughs> about. I remember looking up on um, Brian Champagne's page, everyone. And then the last page I look up was Wake Up and Makeup, which was another mm -hmm. big reposting page. Uh. Um, and I was like, what the fuck? Like, she reposted me, gained 50K. And I got my first little sponsorship for fifty dollars, oh, and I was like, "Bitch, go. like I'm making money." Keep You're in mind at the time, now. literally. <laughs> keep in mind at the time. Okay, mm -hmm. so remember I told you we had moved um, from Anaheim because they were like um, fucking kicking us out. I, yeah. We had moved from Santa Ana, so I remember I had gone to my counselor. I was like, "Hey, I want to drop out of um, school and I want to do independent studies because I want to get a real job." The fucking counselor said no. That that wasn't my problem. That that's something my parents have to worry about. So I was already like, when I saw those $50, I was like, fuck, like my parents are still not good off. We had just moved to Anaheim. They're still struggling. So I was like, fuck, I can help them out. It starts with 50 bucks. Like to me, 50 bucks was a lot. Like the most I ever had in my fucking hand was like 20 bucks maybe at the time, you know? Y me sentía rico. And así empecé. I did the $50 sponsorship. I kept fucking posting. I kept posting. I had one oh, job, man. which was the OC Fair, my junior to senior year. Y después de eso, nunca trabajé. Media, social media, it started picking up, and since I was, I was actually, if you look it up, I was actually one of the very first boys in makeup. So there's a uh -huh. whole Marie Clary, um, so it's a magazine, OGs, yeah. So OGs. I'm in a magazine with like people like um, Manny Mue, um, fucking James Charles, Alex Faction, um, Patrick Starr, like they did a uh -huh. whole photo shoot for us. Like, it was, like, when boys of makeup was, like, becoming a thing. Uh -huh. So, that's how I got my start, like, a boy in beauty. And at the time, like, I was hella popping. I was at my skinniest weight, high school weight. And then I gained weight. Mm -hmm. I get out of um, high school. I get in a relationship. I move in with my boyfriend. I wasn't really active. I was mm -hmm. so in love. And I gained so much weight. Yep, relationships. And do that too. literally, I felt like my career was over because um, I had gone from getting, like, 40 to 50,000 likes, which at the time we're talking about uh -huh. 2015, like you're famous at that time, you know. Now it's like average, everyone can get that, like nothing. Mm -hmm. Um, to getting like 2,000 likes because I had gained weight. Keep in mind that oh, everyone man. saw me skinny, I had stopped posting, and then when I come back, it's like this guy totally inflado, like 300, almost 250 pounds. Like oh, everybody wow, in the comments, yeah. Well, the most I ever got to weigh was 321. I was a big bitch. Ah, that's, so it's yeah, crazy. So mm -hmm. I just continued doing social media. Y pues aquí andamos. It just, it just a became a thing that was... How, how much do you weigh now if you don't mind? I yet? weigh 165. Wow. Yeah, I am your twig. Ah, no, I, I, okay. I lost a lot. I also did get surgery last year. Uh -huh. So that's also why I lost a lot of weight. But my heaviest weight was 321 pounds. Oh, wow. But what I mean, when I was big though, I still had... So when I was doing social media at the beginning... Um, I gained a lot of weight and I lived off of my appearance because the beauty world was appearance yeah, vibes. Yeah, that's another thing that's hard about the So whole I stopped making money back in like 2016, 2017 because like everybody that loved me like was like, oh, you're not as fucking pretty as you were when you were thinner. Mm -hmm. You know, obviamente ya los cachetones, ya la carota, el cuerpazo. Um, and I was like, okay, well, whatever. Like I'm done with social media. I started doing, I met my friend Annette. Um, shout out to Annette and she was doing daily vlogging like mm -hmm. daily vlogging like lifestyle and I was coming out in her vlogs being myself talking and you know showing my personality and a lot of people in her comments were like oh my god I didn't know Alanized was that funny like mm -hmm. I didn't know he was you know like that because everyone only knew me for my little 30 second right. videos you know what I mean I'll send you a video just so you can put it in here just so people can know mm -hmm. what I'm talking gotcha, about gotcha, gotcha. Um, and así empezó I started doing vlogs, right? I started, I was like, you know what, chinga su madre. I was doing Comiendo Con Nosotros with my friend, which was Mukbangs on her channel. Mm -hmm. People were like, Alan, make a channel. We want to see more of you. We want to see more of you. Like, I didn't know you were this cool, whatever. I started vlogging. Uh, um, when I first started vlogging, for those of you guys that remember, I used to post every single day, Monday through Friday, um, for four years straight. Oh. Yeah. So, no. yeah. So, by the first month, by the second month, I hit 100K subscribers. From zero to 100K. Oh my goodness. From daily uploading. Mm -hmm. And, you know, by the time um, it was like my fifth month, my, my, by my third, second month, I was already making like 10 grand on YouTube. And así, así fue. Y pues right. I started doing YouTube. Y pues, aquí andamos. 
Hey, it's crazy, yeah. I love that story, man, and I love that you share numbers too because it really gives yeah. people context of and like, perspective. Yeah, like oh, I started with this much. I, I love that you share how you started with fifty dollars, you know, because it is like, I guess to people like, whenever somebody blows up, they're like, oh, like overnight, you know, it yeah. happened overnight, but they don't really see like, man, like you really did start with fifty dollars, you know. Yeah. It was something that you had to like keep working for. It came with its struggles, like you mentioned, you know, like you. Uh, gaining weight and then that since like oh I, I can only imagine too like in the whole beauty world how like yeah. since since your appearance is like essentially what brings you money it's your job i can only imagine how like hard it must be whenever you like you know little things happen i don't know like maybe you get a pimple or maybe you're dealing with acne or maybe you have something that isn't appearable necessarily yeah, yeah like, the pimples wasn't really beautiful. a big thing but when i gained mm -hmm. a lot of weight um a lot of brands pulled out, you know what I mean? Man. Because I, I love mean, that now all of that is like embraced. It's, yeah, now it's embraced. We're talking about a time where like the only plus size people we had were like Patrick Starr. Like there mm -hmm. wasn't really like a lot of, you know, we had the Jacqueline Hills, we had like the um, Kathleen Lights, all like petite, thin, like beautiful women, mm -hmm. which they are beautiful. But to me, when I got like hit with reality of like, oh, you no longer fit the beauty standard of the beauty world at that time. Because I do want to say the beauty community and the beauty world has expanded so much now. Um, it did hit me hard because a lot of brands, you know, funny story. So, you know, we talk about struggle. Um, when I was thin and doing my beauty tutorials, I started making money. Not as much money as I'm making now doing lifestyle, but I was making money enough to like, like have my apartment, pay my car payment, bills and stuff. Um, and when I had that collab with the brand, I had gotten a big amount of money. I had gotten like 50 grand, mm. right? Like to use my face. That's not commission. It was just, it was uh -huh. a, like, um, it was, a, ¿cómo se le llama? Like, um, cuando empiezas el contrato, it's kind of like a, the pilon, like kind of, they were using my, it was like uh -huh. what they were giving me to use my face and my image and everything. Right. And with oh, that wow. money, we moved out, me and my boyfriend, because I was like, we can move out. Like I have 50 grand. We can divide that money. And my part of the rent is paid. He had a normal fighter job at the time. He was making more than me. What did, just so people get a little more context. What did you have to do in order to receive those 50 grants? Like what were the requirements? So by contrast. So, okay. So the way it started, I was using one of the products so much. They flew me out to New York, um, mm -hmm. one time and then I was on TV, I was on QVC with them, and then they flew me out another time, and they're like, hey, we know you love our products, like, do you want to have a whole collection with us at Ulta? Partnered up with them, it was, you know, everywhere at Ulta stores, and all I really had to do was kind of sell, put the face, put my face on it, pick the um, items, you know, pick the names, do the photo shoot. It wasn't, like, crazy work, like, let's be honest, like, mm -hmm. yo, for 50K, like, claro que lo haces también tú. Right. Especially but coming from making 50 bucks. Nothing, you know what I mean? Uh, pero esos 50 mil dólares se van así. You know, mm -hmm. so I remember when I start, when we moved in to our little apartment, I had gone through the 50K maybe in like five, six months. <laughs> because we furnished the place, you know, by the oh, second month, I already yeah. had a whole stunning ass fucking, you know, studio for mm -hmm. my, like my filming. I had fucking like, we had gotten a new bed, like everything. So mm -hmm. I got, it's Furniture's expensive. It is. So it, be, it came a point to where I was already gaining weight and I wasn't really getting sponsorships. And my boyfriend mm -hmm. was like, hey, you got to go work. Like, rent's coming up. Like, como le vas a hacer? I wasn't doing YouTube at the time. Um, and I was like, no, I'm not going to go to work. What the fuck you mean? Like, this is my dream and I'm going to make it fucking happen. And se va a hacer porque se va a hacer. And a los, a los meses, es lo que te digo. I meet my friend. Kind of when I was going broke vibes, like where my money was se me estaba acabando. Uh -huh. A los tres meses of doing YouTube, I was making 10 grand and I was like, no. Like if I would have gone back to work, if I would have gotten a job when my boyfriend was telling me and when everybody around me was like, hey, yeah. your funds are coming down. I probably wouldn't have been here where I am now, yeah. you know, because I would have been too focused on making the money at a labor job. Your path would have been a completely different. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why it's so important to just be willing to take risk in life. Especially in your early years because you don't have as much to lose as, you know, when you have already kids to provide for and, like, you know, just this whole, like, family in general. But speaking of family, I'm a little bit curious. What was your family's reaction, like, just, like, seeing you, like, fly out to these places, being on TV, doing all of these crazy things, earning all this money because of makeup? 
So at first when, you know, when I started doing makeup, they were kind of like, what the fuck? Like, they're paying you. Like, yeah. it started off with the, what the hell? People are sending you free makeup? Like, uh -huh. that's weird. Like, what yeah, the fuck yeah, are yeah. you doing? Like, who are you online? Like, what, what? why are they sending you free stuff? Especially because I was getting stuff from brands that, like, you see at stores and it's like uh -huh. $60 a palette. You know, to this day, I still do. But at the time, okay, look, that's it. Say, mira, the mic, it's covering a little oh, bit of the screen. Like that. It, it wasn't, like, big. Um, yeah, a little bit still. Is it still there? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's trying to come out. Um, and it wasn't like a big deal um, until I think they really started seeing like that I was making money. Mm -hmm. Like when it came down to like after high school and everybody's getting a job and I was very like, no, like social media is my job. They started seeing like, what the hell? Like he makes money, you know, brands are flying him out. Like, what do you mean you're not going to pay for your flight? What do you mean they're paying for your meals? What do you mean? everything's covered i'm like yeah like look i literally have like 300 bucks in my bank account you really think i'm gonna go to new york with this money ah <laughs> like i'm not paying for shit i think they got really like happy especially my mom and my sister because i feel like they've always been the most supportive not that my siblings haven't but i feel like mm -hmm. my mom and my sister are more in my life than like my two older brothers and my dad like they are in my life but like no me comunico mucho con ellos así right. like every day right so they were super happy and then when i started daily vlogging well they became part of my vlogs and my mom started her cooking channel which she has like over a hundred thousand subscribers on what? there no yeah way. like my whole family started vlogging and yeah, then you become an influencer yeah YouTube, literally YouTube. it became like a whole fucking <laughs> like you get a dollar you get a dollar it became like a whole youtube family so I feel like I have to, I, one thing I will say, I do have to say a lot of my success comes from my family, how willingly and how cool they were being on camera, how, you know, down they were to do fucking crazy ass challenges that I would uh -huh. make them fucking do. And then, you know, my boyfriend starts his channel, my best friend starts his channel, mm. my cuñada starts her channel, and it just becomes a thing where, like, it almost becomes, like, a reality show for, like, the people watching. Even the cuñada? Like, the cuñada, like, <laughs> like <laughs> oh, almost 100K on YouTube. She stopped, though. It wasn't her vibe, like, oh, yeah. but, like, almost hit her 100K on YouTube. Like, wow. she was getting, at the at, at her prime, like, homegirl was getting, like, 200K views, like, on videos i was too like it would it was like wow. a big thing so i feel like we all kind of came up together like we all were making money together so it was mm -hmm. kind of like a new world you know obviously it was something new to adapt because you know my mom comes from this world of just working and labor every day yeah. to like oh now you can make little cooking videos homegirl and you can and make, make money. money from home yeah and doing what you want it was it was good it was good i mean they all had a great reaction wow. there was like family that kind of you know, was against it, and there was like some problemas entre la familia que decían uh -huh. que era muy vulgar, that I was this, that I was that. Mm. But it came down to, I was like, ¿saben qué tías o tíos? Yo no les pido nada, no les quito nada, entonces déjenme vivir mi vida. Yeah, Yo no voy a, to tell me how to, Like, I'm not gonna to stop doing my little videos because they're not gonna stop their life and pay my bills. Period. Yeah. I think that's the best way to put it. Yeah, I mean, you were, you were doing what was necessary to yeah. entertain the people and everything. But man, that's crazy. That's crazy that you touch on that because I didn't know that. Like your your family got involved. Like they in all do it, yeah. Too. That's crazy. Even to this day, like I think, just people that are like my family that have channels, we have. One, two. We have like six channels. Oh wow. In between my family and like they get it like on my mom's channel, she be she made it from the cooking channel to like. A daily vlog channel, so like my sister will sometimes vlog with her kid. So it's like, mm -hmm. toda la familia. Pueden ver un poquito de todos en todos los canales. Literally. <laughs> the dog gets the channel. Ah, everybody, literally. Everybody. No más soltaba, wey. No más tengo cuatro perros. Imagínense que haga cuatro canales de los perros, se mueren ustedes. Literally. <laughs> okay, now I want you to give some advice to, because you know, nowadays social media is so big. Literally anybody can, can become an yeah. influencer. Now, especially now with TikTok, like anybody can start making videos and become you know the next overnight sensation just like that from home you don't there's no requirements to yeah, it literally. so what would you what would be some advice some suggestions you being an og you being you know a person that has been around for so long and is still you know like popping still active what would be some advice that you would give to people trying to do that as a job now um believe in yourself and also be consistent because i feel like it sounds so cheesy i've always tell people be consistent be mm -hmm. consistent but it really is don't expect to blow up and be popping and make money with uploading one video a year mm -hmm. yeah maybe that one That's video great. can go viral but like you said we see a lot of people on tiktok that go viral with their one video and mm -hmm. then not say nada with it you know what right. i mean like once you go viral once you get that taste of it keep going and even if you don't go viral keep fucking going because there will come a day where 
where your people, your community will find you yeah. and you will start because let me tell you, one thing that stops a lot of people is themselves. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I wouldn't be here if I stopped myself when I was barely starting, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Because even when I was like wetting my feet and I felt like this job was done for me, I could have stopped, got a normal job. Yeah, ya no hubieran visto lo que siguió siendo alanized, you know what I mean? So I always say, believe in yourself, take risks because you got to take them. Si no, nunca vas a ver algo que puede salir de eso. And just believe in yourself, be you. And also don't start for the money because I feel like a lot of people will be like, oh, I want to make, I get messages all the time. Right. Like, yeah. Alan, I'm broke and I want to start doing social media and I want to make money. You're not going to see the money right away. Mm -hmm. It takes, uh, I mean, you will see que tus 100 dólares, que tus 200, but bien, bien, bien dinero no lo vas a ver en the, en, until you've created a whole brand for yourself, until you're, you've established yourself yeah. as a person, you know, mm -hmm. online. Yeah, and I, I feel like you hit literally every single point, you know, from like, you know, like the importance of like having an audience because that's essentially what it, you you said how like, you know, like there, there t it takes time for the right audience to, to find, find you. you. And it's true because that's something I tell my friends is like, bro, anybody can do it. There's no blueprint to it. Like literally like uh, all you all you need is consistency and just be persistent. Like keep going, keep going. Like the audience that's for you is going to come eventually yeah. because... Dude, if you look at social media now, like, there's audiences for everything. everybody. I always think about that because, yeah. like, my content is very, like, humorous, very, like, obnoxious, yeah, yeah, yeah. very loud. You know what I mean? And there's people that love that, but there's also people there's that people find me that so know. fucking annoying. Yeah. But then I'll look at other people's channels and, like, sometimes <laughs> as, as creators, we're like, okay, like, let's look at this person's channel. And I'm like, uh, like, I can't sit down and watch this video. Like, it's right, boring it's me. Like, for you, it's not boring. Yeah. But, like I said, that video obviously can have half a million people watching it. And if I don't like it, that's fine. But there's obviously 500 people that do love it. Right. Why? Because everybody has an audience. If you mm -hmm. at home think you're not fucking special, if you at home think that no one's going to find you interesting, trust me, there's people at home that think just like you, that when you start uploading and you start sharing your life, they're going to fucking relate to you. And they're mm -hmm. going to, that's going to be your audience. That's going to be your yeah. people. Maybe my people that like scandalous shit are not your audience, <laughs> but people that love more calm stuff, right. real stuff, like daily stuff is going to be your people. So just keep going. And I love how even the playing field is on social media yeah. because literally we've seen it all. Like we've seen people come from nothing. We've seen people like blow up using their phones. Like, you know, like literally no camera equipment. Like there's, there, there is no excuse nowadays. Yeah. Like you don't need a professional camera. You don't need professional mics. We've seen people like start streaming on their phones or start doing blogging, YouTube on their yeah. phone, blogging, whatever, literally off of their phones. And it, you know, like they made it. So there's there's a case there for everybody. Guys, if you are looking to become an influencer, like Alan and I said, just be consistent. Be persistent, you know, just keep going. And most importantly, believe in yourself. Find something that you truly love to do because if you do that, you'll never feel like you're working a day in your life, mm -hmm. and you know. And, man, I always say it, I'm, I'm blessed to really be able to do this. And We I, are. Yeah, like it, it's it's a huge blessing. It's a job that a lot of people are hungry for, and that should just be motivation for us to you know to keep going and not take it for granted. Because I know it it yeah. could get comfortable, you know. It can get comfortable, and I feel like we as creators we think that we're always gonna have these people. Because like when we take mm -hmm. our long ass breaks for whatever reason it is, we're like ah they'll be waiting, and it's like mm -hmm. no, don't get comfortable mm -hmm. because just There's how you people, think they'll be waiting. Yeah. There's some new influencer coming right up. And that's hungry. That's hungry. That's hungry for yeah. it. Yeah, that's true. Um, let me see. I had wrote, I had wrote a couple questions I had wrote a here. couple questions. Oh, my notes. I think I have one last one for you before we end things off. Let me see. Okay. This is good. So, you, you talked about how, you know, you healed from a lot of things. What is one thing you are currently trying to heal from? one thing i am currently trying to heal from oh i feel like that i mean that's kind of that's kind of good actually I don't know, like, that, I, like that got me a little i think okay one of the things that i'm trying to heal from is my fat mentality uh -huh. that doesn't allow me to be fully happy now that god has given me god in surgery ah uh, well yeah god because god gave the wisdom to the surgeons right, and the 100%. surgeons fucking gave me this new life uh -huh. so yes yeah, um and i feel like a lot of the times like because for 
almost all my life I was overweight you know I've always had fluctuated from like a hundred pound weight gains to a hundred pound weight losses like toda mi vida he estado así que siento que cada vez que he bajado mucho peso I've never been able to really enjoy it because mentally like even till this day I still look at myself in the mirror and I'm like oh my god estás bien pinche gordo like mm -hmm. ew like you look fucking fat like yeah. I'll literally look at myself and like think about that and then there's times where like I'll take a picture I'm like damn I look good you know like I look skinny I look good so it's like right now I'm trying to heal is to let go of that life that for so many years created so much insecurity so much trauma because one thing I will say you guys and I've always been fucking real about this like I know there's people out there that activists like people that like talk about being comfortable at for in your weight at like 300 400 pounds and i've never been one to be like you guys love yourself at 400 pounds because if i'm being 100 percent honest i wasn't gonna preach something i wasn't able to, able to do like i'm not i've never sat down anywhere and been like i love being 321 pounds nunca mm -hmm. so ustedes saben que siempre ha sido algo que me ha tramado and i feel like now that i feel like i have a new life and i feel like i'm able to enjoy myself and see myself and be like wow you look good I'm trying to heal my chubby ally and be like, you know what? Yeah, descansa. Like, stop bringing your traumas onto the new Allen because the new Allen doesn't want to hear it. The yeah. new Allen doesn't want to deal with it. Like, tantos años que I stopped myself from doing things. Like, even wearing crop tops. It's funny because um, recently, like, I, I, the other day I got, like, a comment, right? And in that comment, there was, like, all my followers fighting that comment, you know, when they get all yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and someone's like, Alan, like, drop the crop tops. Like, it, it's repetitive. We're over them. And everybody in the comments was like, girl, let him be. Like, he's finally feeling comfortable. And mm -hmm. it's a sense of, like, por muchos años yo quería y no podía. Right. Y ahora que puedo y me siento comfortable. Y a lo mejor para muchos de ustedes, a lo mejor no me miro bien with the crop top, pero yo me siento bien. Like, mm -hmm. I'm gonna do it. You know what right. I mean? So, I'm just trying to heal that aspect of my life and trying to... Make sure I'm happy 100%. Like, obviously, I'm happy with my new life, but there is times where, like, I get in my head. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So trying to enjoy myself and trying to enjoy this new chapter is something that I'm trying to learn. And, of course, heal, like, my past traumas with the overweight and just my weight problems. Man, I want to thank you so much for your vulnerability. Vulnerability. I know you tell me on my podcast when I have to be like, oh, thank you so much for opening. I it's just like, I, I know what I want to say, but the Hispanic no me is getting in the way. <laughs> no, but thank you. Thank you for thank being you for so open me. about everything. The reason why I asked you that last question is because I wanted to end things off in like a relatable note, you know, like I don't want people to leave this video thinking like, oh, like he went through so much, but he's he good trauma now. dumped us. Ah. Yeah, no, yeah, like he went through so much, but he's good now. Like he's perfect. Like I want to be perfect too. Like no, like like no, you let's... mentioned, you're still dealing with some things. There's still something that you're trying to heal on, and you know, I want to encourage you to keep going and keep trying to heal. Like we're, we're. I don't think we're ever gonna be fully so fully don't. healed. Like there's always gonna be new things because we get hurt, you know, from new things that happen too. Yeah. Then we have to heal from those. So. Um, but once again, thank you for being so open. It was a pleasure having you. Thank you, you for here. having me and thank you for making me feel comfortable. Ustedes saben, amigas, que yo sí hablo mucho con ustedes, pero muchas de las cosas que hablé de in depth casi nunca les platico. So I just want to thank you for making me feel comfortable. I was super nervous. Like, I can't. Yeah. <laughs> you know what's so funny, you guys? Like, even before I filmed, can I be honest? Uh -huh, when yeah, I filmed yeah, with you and it. Valentina, um, and I told you guys I was super nervous. I was not nervous for Valentina. I feel like I, I'm able to get uh -huh. along with girls, you know. But when mm -hmm. it comes to straight guys, yo me pongo nervioso because I, uh -huh. I've never met you. Right, and right, right. even prior to filming Noche Panas, I'd never... Well, I mean, I had seen him. Like, I mean, I had met you at, like, parties. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But never on, like, let's talk. Or, like, right, right, right. We, nunca never, nos habíamos hablado bien yeah, así. So I was really, like, scared to see, like, you know, like, sometimes behind closed doors, you never know how people are going to be welcoming right. or, like, mamones. I, yeah. I've, I've seen it <laughs> especially in the influencer world so oh, i was yeah. very nervous for you so even even when you asked me i said yes but even like You're before like, getting mm. out of the house i was nervous i was like oh my god like i hope he's like cool like i hope he's chill but in cuanto empezamos <laughs> a firmar you guys sentí como un like a relax as soon as i got oh, in the car i'm like quita esos nervios that's y empieza. crazy yeah and i was kind of like iffy about asking you too because 
you know when like creators are like you know have like more following than you and everything you you almost feel like man like i don't want i don't want like i don't want to get rejected or something that's so how i feel all the time i felt like that i was like man like i don't know but at the end of the day i always say this i'm like man if it's from god it's gonna happen yeah you know so. and i'm glad he did because i swear yes. to god ah it's all the fresh good ac but it doesn't the fresh air you guys put up <laughs> that leave you like i feel uh, like yeah. i really did because I, I have a hard time opening up about like my past uh -huh. even with like I'll, I'll speak on it with like my boyfriend and my friend but it's really hard for me to open up. So thank you for mm -hmm. giving me the space, giving me, you know, your time too. Because everyone's time is valuable. And the fact that you're like sitting here listening to all my shit, it really means a lot. And <laughs> no, ustedes, I, amigos, porque una puta hora, I know, no, yo no. <laughs> no, I had an amazing time me once too. again. Thank you. Thank you guys if you stuck around. If you made it all the way to the end, comment this little secret emoji right here for the real ones. You feel me? Uh, the links to Alan Nice's podcasts and channels instagram everything will be down below once again thank you for watching god bless you and we'll catch you on the next one bye guys peace